I want to read you a, a statement from a great scholar, Farah, in his classic, The Life of Christ. Listen. For indeed a death by crucifixion seems to include all that pain and death can have of horrible and ghastly. Dizziness, cramps, thirst, starvation, sleeplessness, traumatic fever, tetanus, publicity of shame, long continuance of torment, horror of anticipation, mortification of untended wounds, all intensified just up to the point at which they can be endured at all but all stopping just short of the point which would give to the sufferer the relief of unconsciousness. The unnatural position made every movement painful. The lacerated veins, the crushed tendons throbbed with incessant anguish. The wounds inflamed by exposure, gradually gangrene. The arteries, especially of the head and the stomach, became swollen and oppressed with surcharged blood And while each variety of misery went on gradually increasing, there was added to them the intolerable pang of a burning and raging thirst. And all these physical complications caused an internal excitement and anxiety which made the prospect of death itself, of death, the last, the awful unknown enemy at whose approach man usually shudders most, bear the aspect of a delicious and exquisite release. There is a doctrine that is going around today in our church, not in this church here, but certainly in Australia, where people are denying the doctrine of the Trinity. If you deny the doctrine of the Trinity, you deny the doctrine of the greatness of Christ. Because Christ hanging on the cross was more than a creature, more than an angel, more than a being unspeakably exalted. Hanging on the cross was Almighty God. El Shaddai, the Almighty One. Yahweh Elohim, the great I am. How much he loves us.